Hi, I am Nanette Pabanag and today's presentation I will discuss about the case of Suter v. Shamba PTY Limited, Year 2002, New South Wales Supreme Court 929, 3rd of October 2002. What happened in this case is, parties signed an agreement for a sale of a hotel. Document included parties, property, price, and promise. Vendor asked its solicitor to draw up a contract to reflect the agreement. The buyer made a deposit as stipulated on the agreement, but another buyer in the meantime made a better offer and the vendor wanted to sell to the other buyer. Vendor predated the contract and argued that there was no contract. The issue raised or whether intention of parties to be legally bound based on the document and surrounding circumstances evidence and whether the terms in the document have contractual effect. In this case, the relevant law is the contract for sale of land, informal contract. A subject to contract can be defined as common expression that has the effect of making a preliminary contract for the sale of lands and houses non-binding until the formal and final contract record the agreement. Parties must intend to create legal relations. Example, they must intend that the agreement be enforceable in the courts. See case Gudiki v. Kerr 1, year 1973, HCA 38. Year 1973, 129 CSR 629 at 638. Air Great Lakes PTY Limited versus KS Easter Holdings PTY Limited. Year 1985 to NSWLR 309. The purpose of inserting subject to contract clause into an agreement is to indicate that any previous drafts of the contract, oral agreements between the parties, or letters of intent are no longer valid unless provided for in the contract. Even though the subject to contract can make an agreement of land and houses become non-binding, it still not affect the validity of the terms in the offer which have been agreed recorded and acted upon. C. Sinclair Scott and Company Limited versus Newton, year 1929, HCA 34, year 1929, 43, CLR 310, November 7, 1929. Application of Law Vendors contend that the contract does not possess an enforceable binding contract is invalid, as original agreement constituted a formal contract. It contained details as to price, land, and parties, not subject to a contract and parties intend to bond immediately. Accordingly, the settlement agreement fell into the fourth category under the principles in Masters versus Cameron, which was added later in the parties want to bound immediately. Whilst expecting to make a new contract replacing the original, this category differ from the first categories in Masters versus Cameron because here the parties have agreed that there may be additional terms in the formal contract which will be substituted for the existing contract. In addition, they may have reached agreement in all essential terms, but they expect to extend and clarify the terms of the original agreement. For the conclusion, in court's decision, the informal document was an immediately legally and enforceable binding contract. This case creates an immediate binding contract until a later agreement replaces it. Therefore, Mr. Suter is entitled to an order for specific performance of the contract. However, in my opinion, 
the K Suter versus Shamba Pty Limited supposed fall into a de decision under category two, where both the parties reach their agreement and want to immediately bound even though they have not signed the formal document will also show that there is intention to legally bound, supported by principles in Masters versus Cameron. Thank you for listening for my presentation.